Can you tell me a little bit about your work with the Drum Major Institute? Drum Major Institute is an organization that has been working for many years to fulfill some of the work that my father and mother did. Uh, our primary objective is to find a way to address what my dad would have called the triple evils of poverty, racism, and uh, violence, eradicating those from our society. And we do that through embracing the values of peace, justice, and equity. So I'm the chairman of the board of drum major. My wife, Andrea Waters King, is the president. We've been involved recently in doing work to protect and preserve voting rights, um, to expand and protect democracy. Uh, we are involved in, again, the, the broad mission of trying to eradicate these evils. And it's going to take a huge, huge coalition. No one organization, no one individual can do it. But we collectively working together, we can ultimately address those issues. With your work on the employers and union side, mm -hmm. what do you see as the opportunities with the new industry to really address those issues and uh, equity in particular? Well, anytime organized labor is engaged, uh, it creates a real opportunity so that workers, their rights can be protected and it can be mutually beneficial. It does not have to be adversarial. And the fact that this is in, in theory a new industry, but it's gonna be a huge, huge industry. It's still just scratching the surface of what it's gonna become. But if workers' rights are protected, which is what the uh, United Food and Commercial Workers Union does for certain workers in our society or any labor, it's a good thing. I'm, you know, elated to, to have an opportunity to say, yeah, this is brand, uh, in a sense, a brand new business opportunity. Uh, there's so much education that has to take place around cannabis and the medicinal effects. I'm not an expert, so I just have a very small amount of knowledge on that. But I know that as we move into the future as a world community, there are things that cannabis, like CBD oil, uh, helps you sleep, it helps relax you. And there, there are things that we don't even yet know the potential that it can reach to really help people. So that's why I'm so happy to be a part of, of, uh, of this effort and, and uh, engaged. I think with the black and brown community in particular, the war on drugs has affected those communities. Like growing up for you, what was your introduction to cannabis? When did you come to wear and what stigmas did you witness? Well, when you say growing up, <laughs> I'm 66 years old. So uh, back, back when I was growing up, I, only thing I knew about was, was weed. But, but what I would say is over the last maybe seven to 10 years, uh, I've begun to become more engaged and involved. And there's so many disparities that you have young African, black and brown members of our community who are in jail for things that our society has finally come around to legalization. It ha we haven't gotten there fully yet uh, in, in some of our states, but there are others where we have. And it's gonna happen. Uh, so one of the things we got to figure out how do we expunge these records of all these people. They certainly were convicted for nonviolent crimes yes. and given felony sentences, which is just unconscionable. So there's a lot of work to do on that side. What would you say to business owners that are trying to make it in the cannabis industry and it can be very expensive to operate? Well, I would say, first of all, with any new entity, there are going to be opportunities and challenges. And resilience is the commodity that I would hope organization would want to embrace. It sounds like, oh, this is easy. This should be like, you know, giving candy to a baby, but that's not the case. It is a legitimate business. And so you have to put a legitimate business structure in place, uh, or at least a plan. Yes. You know, if you have a good plan that you can execute, uh, people will support you. And that's really what, you know, new business owners need. Sometimes some mentoring, I mean, maybe one of the things that would be great, of great help would be some of these large businesses to say, okay, we're going to mentor these individuals who are newly coming into as entrepreneurs. And 
that has an opportunity to create success also. You know, talking about your session, Dare to Dream, I'm just curious, what does that mean to you? What it means is you have to relinquish all inhibitions. Our society sort of puts you in a box. And if you choose to, 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 to go by that model, as opposed to taking the blinders off and to just expand, and realize that there's almost nothing that you cannot do if you put your mind to it, you put in the work, you build a strategic plan. It's unlimited what you can become. Well, thank you so much for being a part of MJ BizCon. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you for it's the nice opportunity. To meet you.